Matsubo George, and I'm so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is a new week, praise God, and I trust the Spirit of God will do something amazing in your life. Praise God. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we thank you for this wonderful week. You are the one who leads us in the way that we should go. So right now, Lord, I commit everyone watching and listening to this broadcast right now. I pray that you will lift them up to the place that you have ordained for them this week. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Man, now before going to the broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Are you ready? Open your mouth and declare these words with me. Say, Father, I demand today for my daily bread. And I receive it because you are good. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. It's your rights. Praise God. Yes, it's your rights. You know, I began sharing with you last week on the one whom God will bless. And I was bringing you to that place of realizing that it's not, you don't just fold your arms and, and sit down. The worst thing that can happen to any man is not to know what God is doing in his life. I mean, that's the worst thing that can happen to you. Now you can excuse yourself from what God is doing in your environment. You can excuse yourself from what God is doing in the world. But you see, if you don't understand what God is doing in your life, then you're in a big problem. See, because it, it means you're really, really in darkness. If you can't see that, then you're in darkness. You know, sometimes because of lack of understanding, even when we read these things in scripture, we don't reason. So, for example, when God brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, I always use this example. And for 40 years, now when they came out of Egypt, and God began to lead them in the way that, I mean, there were other ways. I want you to understand that. See, because Moses walked from the mountain he met God to Egypt and then God says look you will bring the people to this mountain and they will worship me that's what God said okay now he left the children of Israel and God says look my angel will lead you all right they began to follow the angel and then guess what the angel began to lead them in another way and led them to the Red Sea they crossed the Red Sea led them into the wilderness and it got to the point they were hungry they needed food and God didn't tell them when they were leaving Egypt, carry enough food with you. He didn't tell them that. Now, I'm sure some of them would have carried some food. I mean, like you're going on a journey. It's normal for you to carry some food. But you see, God didn't specifically give an instruction, carry enough food because you will need it. Why? Because he had his plan. And God began to feed them with manna, a food that they didn't know. And when you read the book of Deuteronomy, God actually said, he said, I cost you to hunger, meaning God could have held them without food. I'm telling you the truth. He could have held them without food. He could have given them a specific food to eat and that food would have carried them. He could have, he's God. Now, the charm, he says, I caused you to hunger and I fed you with food that you did not know. So the reason he made them to be hungry is so that they would see his mighty power in the area of provision. So when they were hungry, God didn't follow the easy route. God could have said, okay, there is this neighboring community Go there and, and, and tell them to open, allow you to take their harvest from their farms. Or tell these whole people to give you food to eat. He could have done that, but he didn't do that. Rather, he, he supplied supernatural food, manna. 
Now you would think, just like some people have preached, that that's, that's God's um, short-term plan. But do you know what? God fed the children of Israel with manna for 40 years non-stop, except on Sabbath days. 40 years non-stop. I don't think that was a short-term plan. You see, because you cannot train someone. You know, do you know what 40 years is? Not four days, not four hours, not 40 days. 40 good years. Meaning someone who was born when manna started coming got to 40 years old and all he knows about food is that in the morning, they wake up, they go pack the food and they come back home, prepare it and they eat. That's all they know about eating. Now, you don't train someone like that for 40 years and you expect the person to go live another kind of life. See that? So when people say that was all oh, the manna feeding was not God's original plan, it was no, you don't get it. You don't understand God. You remember Hebrews tells us that God at some point had to let it go. He says, you know what? These fellows they will not enter into my rest. Now, I, I, I pray the Spirit of God opens your heart to hear and understand these things. They, after being trained to eat manna, now it's not just about the manna. You see, that's the thing when I say, if you don't understand what God is doing in your life, Oh, that's, that's the greatest of darkness a man can be walking in. So God, now it, it, it wasn't the manna itself. It was the fact that God by himself was providing for them. And I remember the Spirit of God spoke to me one day and said, Son, listen, do you know if they had asked me for any other thing, any other meal, I would have given to them. Now, now that's one of the reasons Moses lost his ministry. See that now? That's one of the reasons Moses couldn't take the children of Israel into the promised land. Why? Because Moses was misrepresenting God to the people, just like many people do today. So they began to eat manna. They began to eat manna. Now they were trying to understand what, what, what kind of system is this? What kind of food is this? And, and they were trying to understand. Now Moses was supposed to teach the people. Moses was supposed to teach them, but he wasn't teaching them. Rather, Moses was being on the defensive for God. He, he, God didn't tell him to do that. So the, the people came and said, Moses, we need water. And Moses said, oh, he went to God. He said, God, can you imagine these people? Eh? They are not just grateful. You know, you, you're doing all this work for them. They, are still, they still have the gods to complain about water. And God says, Moses... Give them water to drink. God wasn't angry. Give them water to drink. And then, uh, where am I going to get water from? Because see, Moses was using his sight to limit God. Because when they asked for water, he looked around and wondered, you guys, what kind of question? Where am I going to get water to give you people? He should have known the God that called them out. The same God that was providing man manna could have provided bottles of water for all of them. He could have thought of it that way and said, okay, Lord, um, okay, guys, yeah, hold on, I'm coming. And then he goes to the Lord and says, Lord, what do we do about water? I didn't think of that before. And God would have told him what to do, just like God told him what to do. But he went with this approach before the Lord and said, Lord, can you imagine these people? Eh? They are not even grateful. God said, Moses, give them water. Where will I get water from? Strike that rock with your rod. Water will come out from the rock. Okay. All right. Hey, guys, all of you, come here. He took his rod, struck that rock, and water came out. Oh, everybody was happy, like, whoa. Now, now Moses was supposed to understand the wonders of God and began to push further in what God was doing. But he didn't. Now, it got to the point these people said, Moses, this manna, yeah, 
it will soon grow on our heads, you know, like we say. <laughs> Can't we eat something else? Something else like what? Can't we eat meat? Ah, Moses is like, what, what you guys are? What is wrong with you guys? Meat? Where? He was still using his mind to limit God, just like a lot of people do today. And he went before the Lord and said, Lord, can you imagine? And God says, Moses, they want meat? Yeah. He says, okay, tell them. I will give them meat. Moses said, Lord, hold on. Do you know what you're talking about? Do you know how many we are? Where are you going to get meat from? Oh, that was what infuriated God. It was not their request for meat that God got upset. It was Moses, the doubt that Moses had when he questioned God, where will God get meat from to feed them? And God says, Moses, you don't know me. <laughs> you see how Moses was operating. Now that's why the next time they asked for water again, and Moses came up with this attitude to say, look, what, what, what nonsense? And God says, Moses, give them water. This time speak to the rock and the rock will answer you. And Moses, out of his anger, I don't know why he was angry. These people had genuine concerns. And you were supposed to be teaching them how to believe God and how to trust God and teach them about the power of God. But he wasn't. Rather, he was trying to restrict them to follow a pattern. And not that God had given him that pattern. He was the one trying to limit God by his own mind. And so when God says, speak to the rock, he didn't quite get the details of that instruction. He just felt rock again, water again, would do it like we did before. God has sent me, go to the rock. And then he went there and struck the rock. And he struck that rock out of anger. Water came out. The people drank water. But God wasn't happy. Why wasn't God happy? Not just because he struck the rock. But that, it was at that point, God knew that Moses was not a good example to this people. Because what God said to Moses says, you did not magnify me before the people. In other words, you belittled me before the people. You made the people feel I'm angry. It is stressful for me to give them water. You made the people feel he said, you, you, you did not make the people see my love for them. And that's what many people do, including ministers. We, we feel God can only be seen through our eyes. And so we limit people, we limit their experience with God through our eyes. So someone tells you, can God do it? Say, ah, don't, don't even go there. Who told you? Come on now. Come on now. Don't you know who God is? I'm telling you, if you were the one with Jesus, when he, he, when he sent Peter to go with his hook to get um, money from the mouth of the fish, if you were the one with Jesus, you would have analyzed that thing and said, Peter, hold on, hold on, hold on. Please, let's not disgrace ourselves. Um, I have my ATM card. Can you go to the ATM, ATM machine? Why? Because... You, 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 Sorry, did you say Peter should go and sell the fish and get money? No. When he gets the fish, he should open the mouth. He will see coins in the mouth of the fish. Coins in the mouth of the fish. How? Does fish carry coins in the mouth? See that now? Because you don't know what God can do. You don't know the ability of God. You don't know God can create a special fish that can carry coins for days. You don't know that. So because you don't know that, you limit God in your mind. Brothers and sisters, if you want to enjoy the blessing of God, one thing you must make up your mind for is to take that limit of God. You can't tell how God should bless you. You can't say, oh God, you must bless me through my job. Oh, you're limiting him. You are limiting him. But today, listen, I urge you, take that limit of him. Oh, Baraka Zekete, take that limit off him. He, 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 oh, he he's God. <laughs> he's God. He's God. If anyone ever told you 
that rock can give water before you read it in scriptures. Now, I'm not just saying you saw found a spring, you know, from, I mean, you see a dry rock. If anyone ever told you that, look, do you know what? I can use this rod and hit this rock and water will come out. How would you relate with that? But that is how powerful our God is. Praise God. Moses did it. Water came out. If someone ever told you that the sea will part and people will walk on dry ground before Moses did it, would you ever believe it? He did. Praise God. That's who God is. Take that limit off your mind where God is concerned. You don't have to place God in the box that your mind have created. You can let go of that box right now. Open your mind and submit to him as God. Lest you'll be seen to be diminishing God. Not just in your eyes, but in the eyes of those who look up to you. Our time is up for today, praise God. But we're going to continue tomorrow and I pray the Spirit of God will open your eyes and open your understanding today to these things. And I pray that the Lord will, will cause your heart to see and be enlarged. That you will see how great and how powerful your Father is. And you will embrace His love for you. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye-bye.